Hey everyone, last night I was starting out doing a video about uh, about greasing and maintaining your tractor daily checks and and all the greasing and the far the farm walls are very similar to these so uh, and I will explain what's on the farm wall what's not on these so uh, before I do anything concerning greasing. Before I point out the grease points, I will, uh, I'm going to, d to go through the two important checks that you gotta do, do with your tractor before starting them up every, before, every, before, every day. The first daily check you gotta do before starting up is check your antifreeze. And you should be able to touch the antifreeze. If you can't touch the antifreeze, you better add some on these older tractors, especially if it's a diesel. If you don't have enough antifreeze, you will crack the head on them. And the second thing you check is the oil. Some of the gasoline engines have a dipstick, and all the diesels do have a dipstick right here. Some have pet cocks, some of these C264s, and the in the four, uh, application of a 400, the, uh, they, they have a dipstick, but these still have the pet cocks. This is your uh, high level pet cock. If it's, uh, this, is, this is like the full and low on a, dip, uh, on a dipstick. This is the full and this is the low. So we'll check the full and see if there's, anti, there's oil runs out. And there is. So, oil needs changing, which that I'd like to do a video on. But for today, it's good enough. Okay, for the greasing, I'll start at the steering box. Uh, right on, on the W6s and 4s, right at the top, there's a grease nipple. Right on the bottom of the steering box under the throttle lever, there's another grease nipple. Grease them daily. On the farm hall, they have, they have, they, of course, the farm hall H's and the M's, they have a pipe goes up and the steering shaft and wheel mounts to them and there's a bearing up top there. You gotta grease that every day instead. And the second bearing on a farm hall you gotta do is underneath the hood on the farm all the hood is shaped different of course and in there's a hole right at the top of the hood and in there there's a grease nipple you gotta get that one every day okay this clutch shaft greases every day it only takes a shot or two the King pins, grease them daily till the grease comes out. Here's your axle swivel, grease it daily. Your distributor, grease every oil change. It only needs a couple shots of magneto if the tractor is so equipped with a magneto you oil them every oil change. Okay, okay your uh your spindles, you grease them every day until the grease runs out like I did last night. Both sides. Your drag link. Of course, you got a farm all tractor, you don't have that. You grease it every day until the grease runs out. Same with these, uh, these, uh, king pins. Now on the uh, water pump, on the sixes, there are two nipples here, and the nines, and the M's, and so on. And one could have this cap on. Now the H's and W4's have a nipple right in here, right by the fan. And, and one here. And that nipple on them usually has this cap on, so if you're not, if, in case you're wondering, that's what's, what's there, and that should be greased daily until you're Usually doesn't take much, like the last time I greased it, took three shots and the grease gun tightened up. I don't want to over-grease them, but they have to be greased. Uh, 
It's a uh, clutch shaft right here. This, this is the office at the end of it every day. Grease it, grease it up every day. And the drag link. Grease them every day. And then we go underneath and grease that. On this particular tractor, the farmer that owned it took great pride and put grease nipples in the wheels. And I grease them, I give them a little bit every day. But uh, from the factory, and most tractors are like this, they're packed. The same with uh, this, uh, the end of this wishbone, he put a grease nipple on it. And most, they, they don't have that from the factory. Now this here is a crucial nipple that you don't have to grease every DV, every other oil changes enough. But in here, or underneath, I'll show you underneath in a minute, but there's, the, this super W sticks it in here, is the throw out bearing nipple, it's very crucial to grease that. If you don't grease that, the bearing will go, and you're sweating the tractor on most, most of these tractors to fix it. So, uh, I, I, since it's due for the oil change, I'm going to grease it right now and give it about five shots, maybe. Or until it tightens up. There, that's good enough. Okay, on most tractors, I pulled the bob cover off to clarify, but mo most of the tractors, the grease nipples, so the fill out bearing comes in from the bob and you have to pull this cover off. It's very crucial you get that. You don't want to be splitting the tractor. We we didn't, and we had a nice farm all in, and it piled up, and the, the fill out bearing piled up because of lack of grease, and guess what? Tractor had to be split. Okay, these bearings here, the farm walls are easy, you can get them from the top, but these, these bearings on each wheel, I deliberately over grease them. And I grease them every day and I grease them lots. And the reason being, I'll show you after I grease them, I give them about 20, 25 shots a day. And I'll explain that, uh, right now, but, uh, the bull gears run very close to the housing here. And if one of those bearings goes, what happens is that is, is the, their ball bearing and the, the there's not no not a lot of clearance between the bull gears and the case. And if the ball rolls down, they'll fall they'll fall in and punch a hole through your case. So it's very important you grease these. And by over greasing them, what I'm doing. And we've done this for 70 years, our family. We've had, had these tractors in the family that long. But what we're doing is we're, we're, the reason we're over greasing is we're, we're, we're putting grease in the housing so if a bearing does go, it's, it, it, uh, it, it'll catch, the, the, the grease will catch the balls and prevent them from poking holes through the case. See, there's nipple on the one of the brake pedals, and there's nipple on the clutch pedal, and I'm going to get them both right now. Okay, I'm about to do an oil change on the Super W6. It's time for that. And I got some of the stuff. This, this is a fleet guard number, the LS584. The IH number, the newer, the changed up number is 376375R91. It fits the, it fits most of the M's, most of the W6's, all of the Supers, the 400, 450 gas tractors, all of those. And that, it, as well as it also fits the early, the, the early H and W4 as well as the, I think even the early A's and B's take this longer filter. The the H's and, and the little ones, the short filters, the part number is 376374R91, and the big tractors and the diesels are 
I don't mean weight, it means it's terrible, it's suitable for winter use. These tractors, when they are new, are supposed to have 30 low ash or engine oil, but the problem with that is, is it's not suitable for winter, so farmers switch back from, from, uh, from 10 to 30 all the time, whereas we, we, especially here, I'm in Alberta, and, and, uh, the 15, I did some research on this, the 15 is the viscosity at 0 degrees Celsius, and the 40 is the viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius. Well, here in Alberta, at 0 degrees Celsius, and especially in January, is a nice, nice warm day. So, uh, so yeah, we, uh, and here, there again, Win winter probably is defined by zero degree weather, which is uh, freezing mark 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, here it can get that. Here, here it can reach that temperature at nay, nay at least six months of the year, at least. So I uh, go to 1540. This oil I got is a co-op oil. We use co-op oil around here. We use Petrocada for years, and they changed their formulation. It's not as good as it used to be. But there's there's several good oils for these you know, working these tractors, and if you want to use 30 low ash, if you can find it, go ahead. But uh, you know, uh, if you're in a warm climate, you could use 30 year round. It's no problem. And also uh, today, the, the the reason I ate recommended 30 low ash, that was the best they had at the time. These tractors were built. These multi grade engine oils did not come out until this tractor was at least 20 years old. Now, uh, now, uh, so, so uh, the reason I each recommended that it's the best they had at the time. Now, there's so much better out. Do you, do I recommend the use of synthetic oils in these old tractors? No, I don't. But. There's some good conventional oils out there, and for these old tractors, everything's a lot better than it was. Even super tech oil from Walmart is plenty adequate for these old tractors. I change my oil fairly often. Like 100 running hours is a good time to change oil. If, if the tractor is equipped with a, an hour meter, of course, the... Uh, like especially on a tachometer, it takes a lot longer because it's engine driven. So if you're idling around a lot, you're counting, you, you, you're you're clocking more hours than you're counting on your meter. So uh, I got my socket set and my wrenches, and let's get at it. Okay. Usually these drain plugs take inch and in need for inches. That's what this one takes, I'm pretty sure of it. The wishbone on these standards makes a pain. Okay, now I'm going to pull the uh, drain plug off the fil uh, filter. Uh, you don't have to do this, but sometimes you can't, to be honest with you. Oh, there's nothing in here. There should be. Hey, right there's nothing in here. I wonder if there's... Oh, there's a little bit in there, I guess. Usually there's not much. It usually drains back. Okay, and I'll uh, pull the filter off. Uh, 
I believe this seven eight. Yeah, the air. Sometimes they sometimes the filters get air locked and oh this one's not uh Okay. Okay, now that I got the filter off, I'll clean, there's sludge in here, the tractor was sitting and seized up for a while and they did change the oil in it and changed it actually fairly recently, but after so, because it was sitting so long you get sludge and often gathers down there, so that's another reason I pull, I like to pull the plug out. I get get that cleaned out to get rid of that. Keep your engine as clean as you can. There's no ring that goes in this filter at base. It cut you it often comes with a new filter, but you don't have to change that every time. I I don't. I changed it last time, it'll be good for this time too, so I'll put the filter. Okay, I'm going to put the filter back on. Cam was tilted a bit because I got sitting on the coil. I filming myself with a magnet, a magnet on my camera, but you got to make sure that filter sitting in that o-ring as good as you can. You know, if you get off, you could break down the filter and make it housing and make it, uh, it won't seal again. You could bend the housing actually. Tighten this good and tight. Okay. Set my camera up again. And put the drain plug in the filter. And as with all drain plugs, they're either out or they're tight. You don't ever, don't ever screw a drain plug in fi fi finger tight and, and leave. Otherwise, you're gonna, you're gonna end up having a bad day one day if you do that. That, that's what happens if you leave a thing, a, a, a drain plug fi finger tight. Okay, now I'm going to put the drain plug back in, and it's the exact same principle. The drain plug, you pour it in, and then you tighten it. My dad, he's a heavy-duty mechanic by trade. He worked at an Ellis Chalmers dealership when he was young, and he uh, rebuilt the engine in the 190, and the engine, and it was a real good tractor. The engine turned out really well. The customer was really happy with it. And the hired hired man went and changed the oil, and put the drain plug in finger tight, and he ended up having to rebuild his engine again because of stupidity. So make sure that drain plug is tight, or leave, leave it out completely. $28,000. Okay, before I fill it with oil, what you do with these is pet cocks is you uh, open up your upper level pet cock. And you fill it till the oil runs out of the upper level pet cock and then you're full.
That was a big oop. Now I better clean that. Ooh, there's, uh, there's moisture in the well in this thing. See, that's caused by water. So I gotta just keep changing the well and they'll clean it out eventually. But there's nothing leaking inside though, it's good that way. Okay, now we're going to put oil in the engine. I got a 10 liter jug. I bought this just for the, for the purpose of making videos. I normally, uh, we normally have a barrel at home. And you just fill jugs out of the barrel, but this time I bought a brand new one just for, for this purpose. Oh yeah, fill her up with oil till the oil runs out of the pet cock. Okay, we're gonna fill her up. You guys will probably see this run out before I do. Should take most of the 10 liter jug. I think the uh, these actually hold quite a bit as well. Nature W4 holds about five and a half liters. These are a much bigger engine too. coming up and doing an oil change that's uh, in wind is a bad, bad idea. I don't like that. Still no drip out of there. We got the full engine. Of course, cleanliness is imperative, and I drop this silly thing by cleaning her off. Then, uh, it should be tightened a bit. You don't want to tighten it too tight, but it should be tightened. Your finger tight is not adequate for that. Okay, next step, fire up the tractor and check for leak. Check for filter leak. Of course, the well's nice and, well pressure's nice and high just like it always, it should be. Doesn't look like there's any leak. There's a little bit of it's wet there because the uh, gas gets wet, but I don't think it's leaking, so we're good to go. Now on to the next step, and that is we change the oil in the air cleaner. We remove the cloud. There it 
we have, there's some grass and stuff in this probably because the tractor was sitting a long time. I have changed this before. I changed it when I got the tractor and I, the first oil change since I got the tractor bed's dirty enough. It's, there's grass in there. I don't know where it comes from. So we clean the, so we clean her out. I got her, got my air cleaner cup all cleaned out. I washed it with Varsol in the rag. Now I'm going to fill it with oil. Now what kind of oil do I use in this air cleaner? Well, I'll show you. I just used the old oil out of the engine. Your, uh, the oil, uh, oil in the air cleaner doesn't lubricate anything. It's just there to catch dust. So, uh, it holds about two liters. The oil is, uh, about five bucks a liter. So, uh, might as well just use the oil of the engine if it's clean enough. If it's totally sludgy, yucky stuff, I wouldn't use it, but this stuff I change the oil often enough that it'll work just fine for an air cleaner. It just, it just there, kept it. It's not lubricating me. I fill it right up in there. It feels dirt. Okay, another check is the steering box. Well, on uh, a farm all you gotta pull the grill for that. Oh, and these, it's not easy to get at either, but it's doable. There we go. I'll just uh, shut this off and okay the well level of the steering box is up not too bad you could you could see it there it's down about uh, half an inch from the bottom of the thread it'd be fine so uh, I'll put the plug in then we'll do another okay Here's my last check. I don't think it recorded last time, so I'm going to do it again, but your transmission level check, and there again, your farm all in is the same thing. Same place. I think the H is 2, the H and W4 is there too, and there's plenty of gear oil in here, so sometimes that concerns me. I have too much gear oil because the moisture gets in. And we had just the regular W6, a real nice regular W6 in 1950 and we poked the hole through the rear end housing because of ice in the rear in there so that's a concern this tractor it's not so much a concern because it's sat for at least 25 years and I ch I pulled the bottom plug before I started it and and the oil is just fine so there's no water at whatsoever in it so it be uh it's okay Another thing you want to check when you service is, of course, your mason jar on your air cleaner, or your air cleaner cup, depending on what style of pre-cleaner it has. Uh, 
This one, if you pay attention to my first video, it didn't have a, 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 an air cleaner jar, whereas I found one and put one on here. Now it should have one, so, of course, so I put one on. Okay, I have the hood off the Super W6 because I gotta do two more, I gotta do one, two more important things. I put 5W40 in the oil can because you want fairly light oil for this. But, you got every oil change you should, I can show it, give your generator about three drops of oil. That one didn't quite go in too. Uh, there it is, on each end. There we go. The same applies to the starter. There's a bearing, an oil cup right here on the starter. It gives that oil too. I don't know if I can fill them in oil, but I get a try. Ooh. I don't think I could do this while holding the camera, so I'll just shut it off, but you know what to do now, so. I hope you learned something concerning the maintenance of your international tractor. I think I was pretty thorough on the subject and uh, hope to see you again in another video. Bye.